Well, warm welcome to today's talk, Friday the 8th of September. Now, we want to look at excess deaths today that are just carrying on in a group of countries where they are remaining high. But there's another group of countries where excess deaths are well below the average. What is going on here? Now, let's look at this graphic here to begin with. And this is not related to the excess deaths, of course. This is related to uh, vaccination status. And this is share of people who completed the initial COVID-19 vaccine protocol. So we see we've got countries that are fairly highly vaccinated up here. Australia, Canada, Ireland, New Zealand, Denmark, United Kingdom, United States, Netherlands. What we might call the more affluent uh, countries up here. And then we've got poorer European countries uh, beneath who vaccinated at much lower rates. So, for example, we see Moldova there vaccinated at what round about the 30% rate as opposed to Australia where it was well over the uh, 80% rate so difference between 30 and 80% so really quite significant difference in in vaccination rates and just let's look at that here so we see countries that are um, highly vaccinated up here and then we compare that to countries this group of countries where there's low amounts of vaccination here so that's interesting to note. Now, we're not saying that there's one simple cause of the excess mortality. It is going to be more than one factor. It's going to be multiple factors. But let's just remember those countries where the vaccination rates were higher or lower, because it seems a pity that countries that have spent a lot of money on vaccines aren't benefiting from lower rates of mortality overall. It just seems a real pity that the more sophisticated countries are having the richer countries are having more excess mortality compared to the poorer european countries um let's show you let me show you what i mean here so that was the vaccination rates now this is the united states so we see that the excess deaths in the united states are currently running about the eight percent mark um this is still high and of course this is at a time where we would expect it to be lower because the more vulnerable people we would expect to have uh, died already. Here we see the uh, United Kingdom. And again, we do see that the, uh, the excess deaths remain high in the United Kingdom, round about. This week's actually down to 4.5%, but this average here is looking at round about. This is from our world in data. Looking at round about the 10% mark for the excess deaths in the United Kingdom. This is Australia. Now, Australia, it's particularly high, I'm afraid. Uh, we see Australia's around about the 18% mark for excess deaths. And it stayed high really for quite a long time now, right from the beginning of uh, 2021. So very high excess deaths in Australia. Canada also um, remaining high, unfortunately, over the 5% mark for excess deaths in Canada. Um, Netherlands, not quite so bad in the Netherlands, but we can see it's been in positive territory. There's been uh, some excess deaths, again, pretty well from, uh, well, that's from about March 2022 there, all the way through to the present time. Not as bad as in some countries, but still there. Denmark, again, looking at this trend here, we've got this overall trend of excess mortality in Denmark. New Zealand, it has been higher, but New Zealand does seem a little bit lower at the moment, but it has been high for some time. And uh, New Zealand can be a little bit slow with their data. So let's hope that's a genuine uh, picture of uh, New Zealand. Ireland, really quite high. That figure there is about 11% in Ireland. So we see that the excess deaths in Ireland have really been quite, uh, really quite high for quite some time. Very sad to see that in Ireland. And just reminding ourselves of the countries where the vaccination rates are higher. So all this money spent on vaccinations, and yet we still have the excess deaths in these countries. Now here we have countries where the vaccination rates are much lower. Generally poorer Eastern European countries with lower vaccination rates. How how is that do how are they doing in terms of excess deaths? So let's look at these countries now. 
in terms of uh, excess deaths. And we see in Bulgaria, first of all, that deaths are about 20% less uh, than we would expect based on the five-year average at the moment. So pretty good news there in Bulgaria in terms of excess deaths. And it's been down, as we see, they've been down for quite some time since March, uh, since March 2022, roughly. Uh, Romania, fairly similar position in Romania. Uh, excess deaths, let me just show you the whole graphic. So we can see that uh, we're well below the uh, the average here and have been since since March 2022. We've been well down, nicely below the uh, excess deaths, exactly as we would expect after a pandemic where um, more vulnerable people have already left us, sadly. Um, Hungary, again, well below the average line of the previous five years. So reduced excess deaths in Hungary, not quite as long as some other European countries, but they've been down for quite some time now, certainly since uh, all of 2023. Good news in Hungary. Poland, again, we see fairly lowish there has been the odd blip but lower than average for most of 2023 i think that's fair to say some slight peaks above average but certainly lower than the uk constantly higher or the united states constantly higher azerbaijan going around about the zero mark so that's the zero mark there so azerbaijan fairly low now, kosovo also round about the zero mark, nearer what we would expect. Slovakia, um, well, quite a bit lower than the zero mark again for pretty well all of 2023. So um, what are we there? Something like minus 20% less deaths than would be expected for the five-year average from uh, Slovakia, a poorer eastern, uh, towards the east European country doing very well. Armenia. Well, Armenia, again, well below the average for, again, pretty well since that time period, since March 2022. Um, and um, going above one month there, but lower for all of 2023. Very consistent trend that we're seeing here. Georgia. This is the Georgia in Europe, not the Georgia in the United States. Again, lower for, let's just show the, the whole thing there, the zero line. So below for, again, since pretty well March 2022, lower than average expected deaths, which is what we'd expect because of all the vulnerable people who died in the peaks associated with the uh, pandemic. Uh, Moldova, again, the same pattern since March 2022 deaths have been mostly below what we would expect again just to look at the whole thing there see it's a few percent below but it has been what 10 percent below for quite some of the time and and lower since strangely enough round about march 2022 which is exactly what we would expect because this is when omicron had taken over from delta much less pathogenic, vulnerable people already died, we would expect the deaths to be lower, as we're seeing in the, all these multiple Eastern European and poorer European countries that we are considering. Uh, Bulgaria, again, very similar pattern in Bulgaria. Much lower deaths throughout, well, later in 2022 there, but certainly for 2023 we're seeing much lower mortality well below the zero line um which would be the uh the average that the five the five-year average um much much better news there much better news in uh in bulgaria so that's good uh bosnia hurts a governor Again, since March 2022, that familiar pattern, uh, basically lower and certainly lower for 2023 with some 
peaks, but the overall trend and the average is there well, uh, well down, as we would expect. Now, let's just remind ourselves of the uh, graphic we looked at earlier on. Uh, share of people who've uh, completed the initial COVID vaccine protocols. The country that has uh, spent more on vaccination, sadly, not reaping the benefit of that, in that these are the countries with higher deaths. The countries with the lower vaccination rates, as we've seen, are the countries with lower death rates. So it looks like it's better to live in a poorer country. OK, you don't get the high COVID vaccination rates that we uh, um, benefited from uh, here, um, but you get less excess deaths. Whereas we have excess deaths being maintained. Now, the excess deaths in the UK and other Western countries are in all age groups. This is not just older people. So this is the data from uh, Office for Health Improvement in the UK. And we see that excess deaths in the age group, uh, this is the 0 to 24, have been higher, sadly, for uh, some time on average. And that's a bit of a blow up of that. We see these uh, increasing deaths. Anything in light above the line is excess deaths. Anything below the line in dark is less than we would expect, but way more of the time in the 0 to 24 year old age range, we're seeing more deaths. 25 to 49 year old age group. Sadly, the same pattern. More in this age group is dying compared to the five year average. Again, a bit of a blow up of that. We can see positive territory where we do not want to be for most of the time. This is the 50 to 64 year old age range. Again, it's very positive territory where we do not want to be. All age groups. <coughs> uh, 65 to 74, similar pattern. Let's blow that one up and we see they're in positive territory where we don't want to be for much of the time. This is affecting all uh, age ranges. Now, briefly, I'm just going to look at some of the causes of death from the UK data. Actually, is this England and Wales? I'm not sure. No, this is just England. Just England, but it's very fairly similar for the rest of the UK. Now, this is ischemic heart disease. So we see that more people are dying of ischemic heart disease. Light blue, more than we would expect. Dark blue below the line, less than we would expect. More deaths from ischemic heart disease. A lot more deaths from heart failure than we would expect, nearly always above average. Heart failure where the heart muscle is no longer working. For example, heart failure could be caused by myocardial infarction, the disease of the coronary arteries that causes the blood clot. Heart failure could be caused by myocarditis. Uh, it could be caused by failure of the heart valves. When the heart is unable to eject enough blood in a one-minute period, the cardiac output falls to the point where it's insufficient to meet the metabolic demands of the body and often associated with congestion as well, resulting in swelling and edema. So we're seeing that that is uh, increased. Um, now, other respiratory diseases in England, um, other respiratory diseases are, are low, much less deaths. So in COVID, you might expect more long COVID complications of COVID, you might expect more deaths from other respiratory diseases but you're actually seeing less from other the classic this is a classification other respiratory diseases less deaths than we would expect um this one is alzheimer's disease less than we would expect now this is not surprising because the people that would have gone on to get alzheimer's disease are the elderly and the more vulnerable and they've sadly already left us in the past few years so this is exactly what we would expect uh, in, in a pandemic we wouldn't expect the other things and we no reason why we would expect the great increase in in cirrhosis on other liver diseases so way more people here dying of liver disease 
So remember the dark below the line, less people dying, the light blue above the line, more people dying, way more people dying of liver disease than we would expect. Cirrhosis of the liver being fibrous scar tissue in the liver that can occur as a result of a long-term uh, or ongoing inflammatory process in the liver, for example. So it's, uh, it's a pity that the countries that invested so much in uh, the COVID vaccines aren't reaping the benefit in terms of um, reduced mortality. Quite the converse, they're seeing increased mortality. This is just a little bit from, uh, so that they're the references, our world in data, the vaccination one, Office for Health Improvements. This is just the latest figure from figures from the UK. Um, 10,086 deaths in the week in England and Wales, 203 mentioned novel coronavirus, 2% of all deaths. Of course, many of those were with, not from COVID. But again, this last week, so this is, remember, this is week... Uh, Ending the 25th of August, ending the 25th of August, week 25, sadly 4.5% above the five-year average for the UK. When will this trend end? We are losing so many people. And to be quite honest, I'm one of the few people talking about it. Why isn't this a national, international scandal? Why aren't the investigative journalists from the national televised uh, news agencies um, crawling all over this story, demanding the truth? The silence remains deafening. The deaths remain uh, higher than we would expect consistently with a strange pattern that the uh, the western sophisticated countries have uh, higher rates of death countries like this that have coincidentally higher vaccination rates higher rates of death in these countries lower rates of death the references are all there look it up for yourself um questions need to be asked more freedom to ask more questions would be good but anyway i've shown you some uh, bizarre coincidences in this video we'll leave it there as always thank you for watching